and the madness of ours. In fact, if God blind your enemies, your, en your enemies cannot touch you because your enemies, enemies cannot get where you are. And he says that he would do it. And then he says in verse 5, Then the clans of Judah will say in their hearts, Oh my God, the people of Jerusalem are strong because the Lord Almighty is their God. The Lord Almighty. In the Hebrew, there are three dimensions to the Lord Almighty. The Lord Almighty means the host. And what is God the host of? God is the host of the human armies. God is the host of the celestial angels, and God is the host of the creation that he has created. That means it does not matter the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The Lord Almighty is the host, and he said in the text that you as Jerusalem, you as the city of David, you will be able to declare that the Lord your God Almighty is your host, and that is why you are strong. It's not because of your looks. I know you look good. It's not because of your money. It's not because of your car. It's not because of your house. It's because the Lord Almighty is your host. And some of y'all need to celebrate that. And some of y'all need to be thankful of that. Because if the Lord Almighty is your host, it means it does not matter whatever environment you walk in, God is walking with you. No, y'all, 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 y'all take it too long to shout. It does not even mean that God is walking with you. It means God has already walked before you because you shout about the omnipresence of God. That means God does not have to wait to get there. God is already there. I need somebody to shout that no matter where you go, God has already gone before you. You just got to open up your eyes and see that he's already been in the room. You just got to open up your eyes and see that he's already in the room. Am I talking to anybody right now who knows that the Lord Almighty is your host? And that's why tomorrow you can celebrate when you eat that turkey. You can celebrate when you eat that mac and cheese. You can celebrate when you eat that cranberry sauce. You can celebrate that no matter what happens, the Lord your God is your host. And so he says in verse 6, on that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a fire pot in a wood pile, like a flaming torch among sheep. is that he's going to place within your hands everybody else around. He's going to place within your hands both friend and foe. He's going to place in your hands those who would help you and those who will come against you. He's going to place in your hands those who are blessing you and those who are trying to curse you. He is going to place in your hand. Notice he says that they would be like a fire pot and the wood pile would be all the nations. Y'all ain't shout loud enough tonight. In other words, what he is saying that you will be in the fire, but you won't be on fire. We shout about that a few weeks ago when Moses was getting talked to by a burning bush. The Bible says that the bush was in fire, but the bush wasn't on fire. In other words, in the midst of a fire, God can preserve you. In the midst of a fire, God can keep you. Am I talking to anybody tonight who knows this whole 2021, you've been in one fire after another fire. This whole 2021, it seemed like you hopped out of one crock pot and hopped into another crock pot. But yet here you are on November 24th looking all good. You can't even smell smoke looking all good. You don't even look like you've been in smoke. Would you open up your mouth tonight and give God the glory and the honor? And he says that they will be like a flaming torch among sheaves. A flaming torch. See, what he's saying is that some going to jump in the fire, but some going to not try to be consumed by the fire, but you a fire. And so when you move through, either you're going to jump in or you're going to get out the way. <laughs> I stopped by to tell somebody this next season of, of, of your life, people going to either have to learn to roll with you or they're going to get rolled on. That's the only two options. You either roll with me or you're going to get rolled on. But I'll tell you one thing, you're not going to stop what God is doing in my life because it's like a locomotive running downhill. And that's why I'm not waiting to January 1st to give God the glory. I'm not waiting to January 1st to make no kind of different resolution. I'm declaring today. The change starts today. I came to Bible study and I heard that not only am I a fire in the fire, but I'm just like a fire that can consume whatever 
that comes against me. And so if you're trying to help me, then God bless you. But if you're not trying to help me, just sit right there and watch the fire. I wish the city would catch on fire. I wish the city would catch on fire. Then the text says, they will consume all, somebody shout all, all the surrounding peoples right and left, but Jerusalem will remain intact in her place. Y'all will consume people right and left, but the city of David will remain intact in her place. Then the text says in verse 7, the Lord will save the dwellings of Judah first, so that the honor of the house of David and of Jerusalem in heaven may be greater than that of Judah. The Lord will save the dwellings of Judah first. Judah translate to praise. The Lord will save the house of those who are praising first. That's why no matter what you're going through, you better learn how to give God the glory and the honor. Am I looking at anybody from the tribe of Judah up in here? Am I looking at anybody who know how to praise God? I know we got some beautiful songbirds at this church, but when you drive to church, you're already giving God the glory. You're not waiting on roles in these Levites to play men, no. You're giving God the glory in your car. You're not waiting for pastors. And I a pastor to pray no kind of prayer or preach no kind of sermon because you from the tribe. He says, I am going to save the dwellings of Judah first so that the honor of the house of David and of Jerusalem in heaven may not be greater than that of Judah. And on that day, the Lord will shield those who live in Jerusalem so that the feeblest, the feeblest, what a word, amongst them will be like David and the house of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord born before them. And on that day, I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. Anybody know your Bible? And when you read your Bible, they describe David to be ruddy. They describe David to be a little old run. But yet David assumed the position of being the king. When he says in the text, so that the feeblest amongst them will be like David. It's not for all of you high and mighty type. It's not for you all that's falling out of control. It's not for you all that's the president and the chairperson of this and that. The feeblest is for the ones in the back. The ones y'all don't think much of, the little ones that y'all overlook, the ones that don't come dressed like you think they ought to dress and look like they ought to look. These are the ones, he said, they are going to be blessed like David. I stop by to tell somebody, I know this world talking about what you can't do, but you got a God that knows what he has placed inside of you, and he has just spoken so a blessing over your life. I'm talking to the ones who the family forgot about and who the family don't think much of. I stop by to tell you, you the one that's God's going to elevate. You the one that God's going to bless. I'm talking to the ones that's going to show up tomorrow and they think you don't know how to make mac and cheese, but you've been practicing all year long and God's going to touch your hands tonight and that's going to be the first thing off the table. You better open up your mouth tonight and give God the glory and the honor. Am I talking to anybody who knows Tomorrow your greens are going to be a killer. Tomorrow your ham is going to be a killer. Tomorrow your rolls are going to be a killer. Would you open up your mouth tonight and give God the glory and the honor and the praise? I don't even care if you went and bought that turkey at Boston Market. It's going to taste like it came right out of your oven. For that, we're going to give God the glory. He says the feeblest is going to be like David. It's going to be one that they don't think much of, but God will elevate you. Then he says, watch this. He said, and, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. He talked about blessing him. And then he says, I'm going to pour out a spirit of grace and supplication. And he said, and they will look on me, the one they have pierced. They, they, they pierce. They pierce. They pierce. Anybody know the script? They pierce. In the New Testament, they pierce Jesus. Y'all ready? They pierced him. They pierced him in his head. They pierced him in his arm. They pierced him on his side. They pierced Jesus. But, but guess what? They were not the only ones that pierced Jesus. The Israelites pierced Jesus way back in the Old Testament when they strayed away from God. When they walked away from the commandments, when they broke the covenant. And the Israelites are not the only ones that pierced. You pierce Jesus when you act contrary to Jesus. You pierce Jesus when you 
talk about folk, you pierce Jesus. When you lie, you pierce Jesus. When you blaspheme, you pierce Jesus. When you disrespect your Sabbath and mine, you pierce Jesus. When you disrespect your parents, you pierce Jesus. When you place things above God, you pierce. And he says that he will pour out his house on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me the one they have pierced. Now notice he says they will, he will pour out his spirit. Some of y'all shot about that in gray back in verse 4. Because chapter 4, verse 6, what he says, I will pour out, it's not by their might nor by their power, it's by what? It's by their spirit. Anybody knows that it's the spirit of God that will break a yoke? Yeah. It's the spirit of God that will give you the strength to look at the enemies in your life and say, devil, get me behind me. You want the spirit of God. You want the spirit of God because the spirit of God knows all. That's why when Jesus says, when I ascend to be at the right hand of God, I, the Father, knows what you need. And he's going to send what? The Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have everything you need. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have strength. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have power. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have love. He says that even though you have pierced my side, even though you have disappointed me, you can celebrate the fact that I still love you enough to give you a second chance and to pour out my spirit of grace and supplication. Then he says, watch this. He says, on that day, they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. Imagine having one child and that child is gone. Yes. Imagine that kind of grief. He says they're going to grieve that they pierced, that they walked away from the one who rescued them, that they walked away from the one who liberated them. Then he says, on that day, the weeping in Jerusalem the weeping in the city of David will be as great as the weeping of Hadad Ramon in the plain of Megiddo. The land will mourn each clan by itself with their wives by themselves, the clan of the house of David and their wives, the clan of the house of Nathan and their wives, the clan of the house of Levi and their wives, the clan of Shabbat and their wives, and all the rest of the clans and their wives, the mourning, the mourning, the mourning because they realize what they have done. The mourning, when was the last time you prayed to God, not because of what you want, but because of what you did? Look this way. When was the last time you prayed to God for what you did? God, I disappointed you. And this prayer, I'm not asking you for nothing but your repentance. Nothing but your forgiveness. Nothing but your grace. Nothing but your mercy. God, I'm not coming to you asking you for creature comforts. I'm not coming to you asking for you. I'm just coming, God said, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit so I can stop doing some of the stuff I've been doing and some of the stuff not, and God, I'm not even asking that you would change me, God, for the stuff I did. I want you to change me, God, for the stuff I thought. For what ran in my mind and I allowed for it to linger because you taught me in my scripture that you ought to keep my mind on those things that are eternal, those things that are holy, those things that are righteous. But I've been thinking about a whole lot of stuff that's not eternal, a whole lot of fleshly thoughts, a whole lot of they mourned and all the clans mourned. Because they realized it was not just one that placed them in this position, it was all of them. Then he gets down to chapter 13 and it says, on that day, somebody say that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. Some Bible uh, translations may have declared shall be open. Shall is the present tense of will be. If it had said will be open, that's not really enough for us to shout about because that's a one-time occurrence. In fact, will be opened, that's a past tense event. But shall be open means today it shall be open. Tomorrow it shall be open. Next week it shall be open. And it's a fountain. If it was a reservoir or a lake, then that's just some water. But a fountain is something continuous, something that's everlasting. 
everlasting for Israel will be a place that they can go to in order to be cleansed by of their sins and of their iniquities. You need the fountain of God in order to be cleansed of your sin and of your iniquities. You need to run to God. You need to glow in God. You need to bask in God. You need to be near God. And the reason you should celebrate is that the fountain shall always be open. It don't matter if you get your sense tonight. It don't matter if you get your sense next week. It don't matter if you get your sense on the first of this year. But you can always run to that fountain in order to be cleansed of your sin and of your iniquity. But the key thing I just said is run. You got to run to it. The fountain is not going to move. You know you got to move toward the fountain. You the one that sinned against God. You the one that need to create, create a new, a clean heart and a right spirit. And you got to run. And it says in the text, it will be made available for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. Verse 2. And on that day, I will banish the names of the idols from the land, and they will be remembered no more. God told you, have no other gods before me. And, and, if, and if you kept that commandment, then where did they get any idols? If, if God has to banish all, and if it, if, if it was just one idol, I mean, the word of God would say, God banished idols. But it said idols with an S. That means it was multiple. I know some of y'all, because y'all self-righteous, y'all gonna look at the Israelites and say, well, why do they create idols? But you create idols. Anything, I mean, it may not be a, it may not be a statue of any type, right? You may not be praying to a letters like Martin or Martin, but you pray, I mean, you got some idols in your own life. Stuff that you elevate above God, right? If Bible study or prayer rehearsal is competing with Taco Tuesday, then you got an idol. If worship is complete on Sunday, is competing with the ball game or a brunch day, then you have an idol. And no, you don't have to be in church every time the doors open, but every now and then we ought to see you in somebody's church. Every now and then you ought to be in somebody's house giving God the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. You have 365 days in order to give God the glory, honor, and praise. And I believe the reason some of us push Sunday so much is because we recognize our own imperfection and know you don't do it them other days. So the least you can do on, is come on Sunday in order to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. You do everything else Monday through Sunday. You do everything else on Monday. You do everything else on Tuesday. You do everything else on Wednesday. But to give God the glory and the honor and the prayer. You eat. You don't even pray before the food that you eat. That it might be nourishment for your body. That you ought to be thankful that God placed it before you. You never give God no meditation time. You too busy in the morning getting out the door. Late night, you too tired. When you gonna give God what text says that they had idols that God had to banish. Then he says, I will remove both the prophets and the spirit of impurity from the land. And if anyone still prophesies, their father and mother to whom they were born will say to them, you must die because you have told lies in the Lord's name. Then their own parents will stab the one who prophesies. Their own parents. On, on, on this day, when he's cleansing them from sin. He says on verse 4, And on that day, every prophet will be ashamed of their prophetic vision, and they will not put on a prophet's garment of hair in order to deceive. God said on this day, it's going to be so uh, uh, great as far as his cleansing that preachers are not going to even want to claim to be a preacher. Now, why would he do this? Because God was sick and tired of the impurities in the land. God created this world and the earth, and it was all perfect. We through sin has made it imperfect. We through sin has made it to the point that it needs cleansing. And so when he says on this day, none will be able to say God, because he's he already knows. He knows those who have built up and those who have torn down. 
And he says, I am going to remove even your mama and your daddy going to want to do harm to you. And notice, notice, notice. He says that mama and daddy will go after the one that's prophesying. But he's not saying mama and daddy will be included in this, right? Watch this. You better be careful of the assignment you pray that God placed on your life. See, I know some of y'all want to run the church. You want to be the pastor, the bishop. You, you better be careful because when, when God comes, he's going to come for the head first. Because if the head is wrong, everything coming under it is wrong. Talk to some real people tonight. If some of y'all cook, right? Some of y'all cook. Y'all cook, right? You cook. And if you cook some stew, let's say stew, right? You can't hear everybody going. Let's cook. If you're cooking stew and you take the spoon and the first spoon is good, it's reasonable to think everything following is going to be what? Good. But if that first spoon is nasty, you're going to throw the whole pot, right? Because everything coming out of it is what? Nasty, right? Now, most of us take the first spoon off the what? Off the top. Right? You don't go all the way. By the time you get to the top, you're going to lose some, right? If it's nasty from the top, then everything coming under it is nasty. That's why you ought not sit under a leader that you can't really follow. Because if that leader is nasty and you under it, that's why you ought not hook up on Bumblebee or Tinder with nobody. Because if that person is nasty, everything coming up under that. He going after the top. Text says, hmm. each will say, I am not a prophet. You're not going to even claim to be a preacher. Any other time you want to be a preacher. You want the appreciation. You want the, but I don't even want, I, 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 I am not a prophet. He says, I am a farmer. The land has been my livelihood since my youth. Verse 6, and if someone asks, what are these wounds on your body? They will answer the wounds I was given at the house of my friends. In other words, if there are wounds, in other words, what he's telling you is that if you're going to be a leader, you got to already prepare for some wounds in your body. Don't ask to be a spiritual leader if you don't want no wounds in your body. Don't ask for leadership. I'm talking to somebody that want to be the president of something next year. Don't ask to be. It, you got to be and and get watch this, watch this. I know y'all say sticks and stones, but they don't hurt. No, many times people will use words as wounds to puncture your body. And if you don't want that, don't be in leadership. Because leadership puts you in a position that everybody can see you. Those who support you can see you on this side, but those who want to bring you down can see you on this side. Because leadership place you up here for all to see. And what the text is saying is that they gonna have to wounds they have received because their wounds will be telling that they've been placed in a leadership position. Amen? Yeah. Shame on you if you're a leader you don't have no wound. Shame on you. You ain't doing much. Amen? Amen. But I'm going to talk to somebody know you've been in leadership every now and then. You got some wounds but you still here. You got some wounds but you still alive. You got some wounds but it isn't. It may have hurt you, but it didn't. you a wounded healer now. You a wounded healer now. You, you got some wound, but it's healed. God has made a way. Text says, watch this, verse 7, 13. A weight sore against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me, declares the Lord Almighty. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against the little one. In the whole land, declared the Lord, two thirds will be struck down and perish. Yet one third will be left in it. I don't know about you, but I want to be in that one third. I want to be in that one third. And some of us need to hear this tonight. So you got much to be thankful for. Some of us need to hear this. You know why you need to hear this? Because you don't went to many of funerals during this whole pandemic. And we get up in a place like this and put everybody in heaven. Absent. From the body is present with the Lord. That's what we say. Right? Right? You mean absent with the body, present with the Lord. Well, if we say that in every funeral, then everybody gonna go to heaven. Let's break that down. If we say that in every funeral, everybody gonna go to heaven. Now you need to understand when Paul said that, Paul says, Paul says that absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. 
Paul said that was his desire. That's my desire. That's not me. If I say it, it means all oh, there is going to be truth. Paul said it's my desire that absent from the body, I shall be present with the Lord. It's not a prophecy. Y'all need to understand that. Because the text says two-thirds are going to be struck down. Only one-third will make it in. We don't want to talk about that tonight. Now he says, hey, do you really want to be the third? That's the question tonight. Do you really want to be the third? Because when you keep reading, it's a requirement with being a part of the third. Because the text says in verse 9, the third I will be, I will put into the fire. I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. Gold is not determined gold until after it's gone through the fire, Shaka right? You got to go through the fire in order for them to determine that you're pure gold. If you want to be a part of this one third, you got to be willing to go through the fire and realize that no matter what, I shall come forth like pure gold. You got to be willing to, see, somebody should be shouting tonight and giving God the glory. Because this has been like a year of you going through fire. And the reason you made it through the fire is because the Lord Almighty is your host. <laughs> the reason you made it through the fire is because the Lord Almighty is your host. Somebody in a fire right now. You don't look like you're in a fire. You don't smell like you're in a fire. Your hair don't, but you in a fire right The only reason making it through is because the Lord Almighty is your host. The text says that I will refine them. That means I will make them strong in the midst of the fire. In other words, you won't get strength by being in the fire. In other words, you won't get blessed by being in the fire. In other words, how, how would you know God is a blessing if he's never had to bless you of anything? How would you know God is a keeper if he's never had to keep you from anything? How do you know God is a deliverer if he never has to deliver you from anything? How do you know God will protect your peace if you've never been in some family drama? How would you know that God will place joy bells in your heart if you've never been depressed? How would you know that it's strict to be made perfect if you've never been weak? You got to learn how to celebrate that God will walk with you through the fire. Am I talking to anybody tonight that want to give God the glory? Fire. Jeremiah said, I went through it and it's like fire. Now shut up in my bones. It's fire. He says, I will. And then, and then he says, and I will test him like gold and they will call on my name and I will answer them and I will say, these are my people. These, these are my people. I, I, in the midst of the fire, y'all, will you just call on God's name? In, in, in the midst of the fire, don't call my name. Would you, just, would you just call on God's name in the midst of the fire? Would you just, in fact, here it is right here. Am I talking to anybody tonight right now that knows you've already been in the fire and you've been calling God's name and that's why you're standing right here right now? Would you go ahead and throw your head back, throw your hands up and give God the glory? Am I talking to anybody right now who knows that you've been in the fire and you've been calling on God's name and that's the only reason you here tonight? That's the only reason you celebrate tonight? That's the only reason you giving God the glory? That's the reason that you got thanks living before Thanksgiving? Would you open up your mouth tonight? And he said, these are my people. These are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. These are my people. These, the ones that did wrong, still had an opportunity to say that the Lord was their God. Then the text says, a day of the Lord is coming. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. Jerusalem, when your possessions will be plundered and divided up within your very walls. And I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it, and the city will be captured, and the houses ransacked, and the women raped. Half of the city will go into exile 
but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. Now, he's saying that the Lord comes and the Lord reigns. Now, what he's doing in chapter 14, he's shifting. You got to understand the shift. What he's saying basically in 12 and 13 is the days of Jesus. The days, it's a prophetic word, the days of Jesus. When he gets to chapter 14, Jesus is already hung on a cross with y'all, already throwing a borrowed tomb, already got up on the third day, already ascended into heaven. Holy Spirit has already come. After all of that, what do y'all do? Do you get stronger in faith or do you get weaker in faith? Do you follow him based off of what he's already said would happen? Or are you going to do your own thing? So when he says that the, it's going, the city will be captured, that's post-resurrection. The houses ransacked and the women abused. Half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on a day of battle. And on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley, with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. You will flee by my mountain valley, for it will extend to Azel, and you will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah the king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all of the holy ones with him. And on that day there will be neither sunlight nor cold frosty darkness. It will be a unique day. A day known only to the Lord. A day known only to the Lord. Let's pause right there. Because you see a whole lot of people say this must be end times. You see a whole lot of people. We have an earthquake. This must be the final days. It get hot one day and cold the next day. This must be the final days. They hear a rumor of a war. These are, the text says that the day will shall only be known by who? The Lord. The Lord. Not a prophet. Not nobody with a purple collar and a long chain. The Lord. Not your bishop. The Lord. Not your pastor. The Lord. The day will only be known by who? The Lord. The text says with no distinction between day and night. And when evening comes, there will be light. When evening comes, there will be light. And on that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem. Half of it east to the Dead Sea and half of it east to the Mediterranean Sea in summer and in winter. Verse 9. And the Lord will be king over the whole earth. And on that day there will be one Lord and his name the only name. At the name of Jesus every knee shall what? And every tongue shall confess that he is what? Lord. The whole land from Jebba to Ramon south of Jerusalem will become like the Arab. But Jerusalem will be raised up high from the Benjamin gate to the site of the first gate to the corner gate and from the tower of Hananel and the royal wine presses and will remain in its place it will be inhabited never again will it be destroyed Jerusalem will be secure now some say Jerusalem that is being talked about here is the Jerusalem that John prophesied in, in Revelation because what does John say in Revelation 21? I saw what? The holy city. It was what? A new Jerusalem. And what it is saying in this text is that on that day, God's going to elevate all who have proclaimed the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you won't see the calamity of all the other nations that's being prophesied about. The text says in verse 12, this is the plague with which the Lord will strike all the nations that fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they are still standing on their feet. Their eyes will rot in their sockets. Talk to somebody tonight. 
You better be careful how you treat God's people. Text says this is the plague that you show. The text says your flesh is going to rot while you still standing on your feet. And your eyes are going to rot in your sight. And their tongues will rot in their mouths. Some of y'all probably said some people with tongues already rot in their mouths by, by what you smell. On that day, people will be stricken by the Lord with great panic. They will seize each other by the hand and attack one another. They're going to fight against one another. Trying to escape what God has already pro prophesied over their lives. Why? Because they fought against Jerusalem. Why? Because they fought against the city of David. Why? Because they fought against the kingdom of God. Text says, Judah too will fight at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the surrounding nations will be collected. Great quantities of gold and silver and clothing. Now, 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 see, some of y'all miss that. Because what the text teaches me right there, it, do, it does not matter if you got all of the money. If you do wrong, none of that money can save you. See, some of y'all need to understand that text. Y'all need to contextualize that thing in your own life. You can have all the money in your bank account, but if you get sick in your body, that money cannot heal you. You can have all the money in the world, but your marriage can be one that's up. How many people you know got a whole lot of money? They've been married five, six, seven, nine, ten times. Money can't buy happiness. Money can't buy real love. These people had all the money in the world because the Bible says wealth. It didn't say riches. Some of y'all got wealth is higher than riches. Some of y'all are rich. We're trying to get wealthy. Wealthy means you don't worry about nothing. Well, he took all the wealth from all the nations and he couldn't stop them. Text says a similar plague will strike the horses and the mules, the camels and the donkeys, and all the animals in those camps. See, so some, see, some of y'all still ain't you know, ain't catching it. You're not catching it. Now these camels and these mules and these horses was connected to people. Y'all ain't catching that. It's going on y'all here. These camels. And these mules and these horses was connected with people. Let me go back and get you. It's not just for you to do right. You gotta be careful of the people you run with. Because if you run with the wrong people, you the horse. You the camel. You the It's not just for you to know what to do. You better make sure the people you run with is in line with the will of God. Because if they catch on, you're going to catch it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Text says, watch this. Watch this. Then, verse 16, then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the festivals of the tabernacle. And if any of the peoples of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, don't go to church, y'all. The Lord Almighty will have no rain. So they, they're not going to get no rain if they don't go to church. What if that happened today? I know I ain't going to get no amen on that. I know y'all ain't going to say no amen on that. Watch this. Watch this. It says, if the Egyptian people do not go up and take part, they will have no rain. The Lord will bring on them the plague he inflicts on the nations that do not go up to celebrate the festival of tabernacles. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not go up to celebrate the festival of the tabernacles. They won't get no rain. So in those days, if you didn't go to church, you didn't get no rain. And because that was an uh, agricultural type of environment, without rain meant no crops. And if you couldn't get no crops, you trouble. Texas, now on that day, holy to the Lord will be inscribed on the bells of the horses. And the cooking pots in the Lord's house will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. 
And every pot in Jerusalem in Judah will be holy to the Lord Almighty. And all who come to sacrifice will take some of the pots and cook in them. And on that day, there will be no longer, they, there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord Almighty. And the way that the, 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 the Bible scholars suggest is that the Canaanite represents anybody immoral, anybody unrighteous, anybody evil. On that day, the house is going to be filled with church folk that act like church folk. On that day, the, the house or the sanctuary going to be filled with Christians who are really Christians. Amen? But the text says that for those surrounding that won't get in line. Amen? Amen? That the plague would come. And the plague, and those, this, here, here, this is what I got. The plague will come, and the plague comes from God. Notice the text does not say that the Israelites have to go and make people's eyes right. No. The text says that God will do it. Let God fight your battles. You just focus on doing what it is that God is telling you to do. Amen? You just focus on being part of that one third that's going to go through the fire. Amen? You just be a part of that and keep doing it because you never know when the Lord will say, it's time. And when he said it's time, notice when the Lord showed up, I can guarantee you people couldn't get in line then. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I'm gonna do it. No, it's too late. It's too late now, right? Mama says it's too late, right? It's too late. Get in line now. Do it now. But if you know God has given you a second chance because you haven't done everything that God told you to do in this life, if you know God has given you a second chance. Because you heard this message right here and you know when you look back just yesterday yeah. all the stuff you did. Would you just go ahead right now and give God the glory and the honor? Online, would you just go ahead right now and give God the glory and the honor? And you know, you, you I mean, can't nobody tell your story like you can tell your story. Can't nobody, I know, I know David can tell his and Zachariah can, but can't nobody tell your story like, and if you know all that God has brought you through, you are go ahead right now and give God the glory and, and here's your shout. The only reason you got through it, the only reason we can declare next year we're strong is because the Lord Almighty is our host. And because you know that the Lord Almighty is your host, you don't even have to wait till tomorrow in order to give God the glory. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to praise God for Thanksgiving because it's God and he's been good all the time and all the time. Our God is good. And for that, we give God the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so we have completed the book of Zechariah. I hope it has truly and richly blessed you. We start off the book where he gave the visions, and then we move forward as you saw the visions come to light. And I'm just so thankful that God is a God of a second chance. And I'm so thankful that God, the Lord Almighty, is our host. And so as you eat that meal tomorrow, and as you bask with family and friends, and even some of us may be by ourselves, and that's cool, because some of us, we, get, we know how to handle, in fact, our best time, if we're going to be real, amen, somebody. Amen. And so no matter how you celebrate tomorrow, just celebrate knowing that you got the Lord Almighty as your host. And for that, you can give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. And so we just want to you know, just give everybody an opportunity to just begin. If you don't mind, just begin as we get ready to pray. Just begin to just think about the stuff in life you're thankful for. If you're watching online and later on when y'all go online, go home and pull it up online. Begin to just type in the comment section. Just some stuff you know that God did and only God could do. Go ahead and take as much room as you want. Say, Pastor said I can list as much as I want, but just thank God for all the many things that God has done in your life and is doing. And get excited. I'm excited, y'all. I'm excited the Lord Almighty is our host. We're going to go through the fire. We're going to go through the fire, but we shall come forth like what? Pure gold. Amen. Pure gold. Thank you.
get a ticket. I don't care about Amen. 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 Praise God. And so we thank God for that and what God has shown us in Scripture. We're here tonight to pray for those on our prayer list. Go ahead and type the names on the screen that you want us to pray for. We're still lifting up uh, Sister Crystal Davis as she and the family prepare to celebrate the life of Mother Mary Abram. We're still lifting up uh, Dr. Sharon and Brother Derek Moore. We're still lifting up Brother Greg and Roxanne Martin and the Bennett family and the Rogers family and the Gaines family and the Benefield family. We're still lifting up the Wells family, Andre Dooley and Yasha Crawley and Kimberly Crawley and Marilyn Wells and the entire family. We're still lifting up the Roseboro family. Sister Shante Ellis, Sister C. Eureka Young, Pops Ross Johnson, Sister Wendy Calloway, and the Strong family. Still lifting up Bishop Young, Bishop Kirkland, Deborah Hall and family, Brother Paul Scott. Still lifting up Cynthia Maxwell, Henry and Amanda Norbert. Still lifting up Mother Basha Johnson, Elder Marcus Johnson, Sister McAdoo, and the entire Johnson family. Praying that mother continue to meet the angels of God because the Lord Almighty is her host. Still lifting up David Fishtro Jr. and Sr., Nate, Nina Turner, Nate Robinson, Emmanuel Coley, Mother Paulina Brooks, Daryl May, Reginald Alexander, Mama Vera Harper, Troy Nelson, Pamela Sims, Miss Betty Sims, Lola, the entire Sims family, Sister Sabrina, Taisha Harvey and family, Kiasha Macklin and Shalane Johnson and Carolyn Johnson Willis, Al Johnson and Kent Stanberry and Ray May and Marcel May, Mother Esther Daniels, Mother Ollie Frazier, Sister Barbara Loren, still praying for the 100 year old now, Mother, Mother Alma Thomas, amen. Praying for Sister Willa and, and Sister Tyler and Dasha, praying for Sister Bridget Washington. Amen. Praying right now for Andrew Ireland and Dr. Karen Ireland and Dr. Tamai Johnson and Sister Kanita Lewis. Praying for Yolanda Robinson and Fred Chi. Praying for Barbara Sparrell and John Downey and Walker Posey Jr. Nikita Sample and Markeith and baby Elijah. Praying for Walker Posey Jr. Praying for the McCray family and the Wyndham family, Brother Richard Griffin, Brother Sammy Davis, Mama Hattie Davis, Sister Wanda, Sister Kia Anderson, and baby Jason, Brother Uncle Gus Briscoe, Imani Hayes, and Sister Veronica Hayes, her mother, Booty Briscoe, her Booker T. Stanley, and Eloise Tenner. Praying for all the names that you're typing on the screen, for all those who are considered by this mean old world the lost and the least and the left behind. Those who are hungry, those who are unhoused, we pray and we lift up. Let us pray. God, we say thank you for the opportunity, God, that you have given us to press our way into the sanctuary, God. And just declare, God, how thankful we are that you are our Lord Almighty and that we can call you God. We praise you on tonight and we give you glory, God, for everything we have needed, thy hand has provided, God. And many times we didn't know why we were in the storm, God. We, we didn't know why we, it felt like we were in the belly of the beast. We didn't know why it felt like we were in the fire. But God, we see tonight, we got to go through those things, God, in order to get to the other side, God, that you may perfect us, God, that you might refine us, God. And so we just praise you, God, for the many times that we didn't even pause, God, to just thank you for what you were doing, God. Because many of us wanted it to be easy. Now we see, God, you didn't make it for it to be easy, but you made it, God, for it to be what it shall be, God. But because we have you, everything going to be all right, God. And so we just give you glory and honor and praise on tonight, God. Thank you, God, for all that you've done in this year, 2021, God. It's been a year like no other, God, but your mighty hand has washed over us. Your mighty hand, God, has blessed us. Your mighty hand, God, has touched us. Your mighty hand, God, has not only opened doors, God, but you have shut doors. And so we praise you on tonight, God. We give you glory on tonight, God. We thank you on tonight, God, for everything that you are doing in our lives, God, and in the lives of the people connected to us. 
We thank you, God, for what you're doing in the city, what you're doing in the state, what you're doing in the nation, God, and what you're doing in the world, God. We thank you right now. We join with the Osbury family right now, God, in Georgia, praising your name, God, for your faithfulness, your love, and your kindness, God. We trust in you more than the system, God, and because we trust in you, God, we just give you glory right now, God. We praise you on tonight, God. We still believe, God, that you can make 2021 a great year, a strong year, a mighty year. So we praise you on tonight, God. We thank you for all that you have done, God. We thank you and ask right now, God, that you would go before us. Bless those who do not have, God. Bless those, God, with meals and shelter. Bless those with fellowship, God. Bless those right now, God, in the name of Jesus, as we get ready to partake over food tomorrow, God. Help us, God, to be strong servants and look after the least. Help us, God, to be strong servants and see how we can package the excess and go find other people to bless God. Go find other people to help God. Go find other people to feed God. We thank you right now, God, for the miracles that's on the way, the signs and wonders that's on the way, the healing that's on the way that you shall do through us and for us. And so we praise you on tonight, God, and we give you glory, God. Help us, God, as we get ready to enter, God, into the season of expectation, God, as we get ready to enter into the season to rush to the birth of our Savior, God, to keep Jesus the main thing, God, and to exemplify it in our walk, in our speech, and in our talk. Help us, God, to be our brother and our sister keeper, God. Help us, God, to put down pettiness, put down uh, things that are not of you, God, and help us to realize that you have called us out for a season just like this so that this dying world may know that you live. And how will they know that you live? Because you live in us. We love you, God. We adore you, God. We magnify you, God. In Jesus' name, we offer up this prayer. Amen? Amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Do me one silent. If you feel like you want to join the city today, you just feel like God is speaking to you on tonight, would you just type hashtag all in, hashtag all in, inside the sanctuary, just continue to uh, bring others that they may join our church family and connect with us because we strong. Amen. We strong. Be strong. Yeah. For that, we give God the glory and the honor and the praise. All right? Amen. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Eat all that you want to eat, and then work it off Sunday while you shout and give God the glory. Amen? Love you much. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful night.